The psychological burden of this pandemic is weighing on all of us. And I always get together and just talk about the stats that you need to know, the programs that we're launching, but I want us to also focus on our mental health because this is tough. We're carrying pain, we're scared, we cry, we get angry, but there's also a lot of bright moments where we find the connections and the way to get through this. Data shows us that the tremendous emotional strain this time has placed on the values of essential workers, especially from those in our emergency rooms to the ones that are stocking our shelves. But we are all feeling that. That's my message to young people and their families today. Our lives have all been interrupted, suspended eerily and indefinitely. And it's now normal to feel quite alone. That's OK. But we need to talk to each other. We need not be worried. We need to not hurt as much. We not, need not to feel powerless. And in this moment of challenge, more than 50% of the people who are reaching out, for instance, to the crisis text line that I've talked about at 741741, are turning to therapy and mental health services more than they usually do, accessing resources that exist precisely for moments like this. So there is no shame in reaching out. In fact, you're the strong ones if you do reach out, and I encourage you. So that's why I invited today Michelle Colley, a leading therapist in Los Angeles and licensed clinical social worker, worker to share some steps on all of us how all of us can cope during this time. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us, and I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Mayor Garcetti, and thank you for having me and bringing light to mental health. COVID-19 has taken a real impact on multiple aspects of our lives as it relates to our mental health and our emotional health. For many families, regardless of socioeconomic status, stress and anxiety is widespread, and it filters, in, filters into many aspects of our lives working from home and schooling from home. It's tight, spaces are tight, there's sound, there's internet, dogs are barking, kids are crying, it's really difficult. Job losses, that means revenue change. Am I gonna be able to pay the bills? Is my, are my parents going to be able to pay so that I can go to college because I'm graduating this year? There's also the school closures and what that means. Students missing their friends, their families, their teams, those are all communities. Those with pre-existing health conditions, this right here also has an impact, especially on communities of color. Loss and death, and with that comes grief. There are also other types of losses. Losses of what does this look like? How long is this gonna last? Can I plan for the summer? Am I gonna be able to go to prom? Am I ever going to have a graduation? That's called anticipatory anxiety because we're anticipating. So let's take a look at mental health and a little bit more of depression and anxiety. Let's just review some of the signs and give you parents uh, something to be aware of and cognizant of. Within depression and anxiety, it can look different in all of us. And those symptoms vary from person to person. So within adults, depression can look um, or feel as as if you're just having a down mood. Some people call it, I just feel blue. Some people don't feel depressed at all. They just uh, experience a loss of pleasure. And those things that they normally would do, it doesn't feel good anymore. There are also things like appetite changes. I've gained 10 pounds, I've lost 10 pounds. I don't have an appetite. Sleep patterns can be off. This is where insomnia can uh, peak. And then there's just a sense of agitation. There are more, but those are just a few. Depression looks a little bit different in children. There's a sense of sadness or even hopelessness. Irritability. Sometimes we know when our children feel irritable. You might ask, what's, what's wrong with you? But remember, this can be a symptom of anxiety. And then with children, sometimes they report, mom, I just feel bored and so, or having low energy or just poor concentration. So that's all the symptom of anxiety. I mean, I'm sorry, depression. In terms of anxiety in adults, there are symptoms that are internal and external. So those, some of the internal or emotional symptoms are just worry and rumination. We worry a lot, worry about everything. How long is this gonna last? If I cough, does that mean I have COVID-19? Trouble concentrating, anticipating the worst, just the anticipation of everything, and just feeling tired. Some of those external symptoms it can mimic cardiac arrest. I am feeling like I'm having a panic attack. Or it can be something like just an upset stomach, headaches, 
tension, fatigue, insomnia. Anxiety in children also looks a little bit different. Extreme and unrealistic worry about events, especially COVID-19, being really self-conscious, a strong need for reassurance. Some of the complaints, just physical complaints, when there's really no physical basis for it. So with those symptoms of depression and anxiety, let's just look at some of the to-dos and what we can do about it. The first thing is acknowledgement for both adults and, a ch and children, children, allowing ourselves to acknowledge what's going on. And what I mean by that is giving ourselves space to be able to really openly talk about that. So I know what I'm feeling. I'm feeling tired. I'm sick of this. How long is this going to happen? Unpack those feelings of what it means. And hopefully that will give either you or your child clarity around it. So for teens, just being able to acknowledge, you know, I'm just really disappointed. I'm not going to have a graduation this year. I'm not going to be able to go to prom. So once we've given ourselves permission and we've acknowledged that, hopefully then we can transition into helping others. And what that looks like is communication. There's no substitute for communication. So just literally opening your mouth and communicating, being able to articulate the feelings. So for parents, when our kids come to us, sometimes it's not about, okay, as a parent we need to fix or we need to problem solve, but sometimes we just need to listen. With our spouses, our families, or our friends, this is a way to deepen our communication and our connection. With our families, that means creating new ways, whether it's um, the virtual, whether it's over the phone, or whether it's letter writing, good old fashioned letter writing. The third thing I want to mention and the last thing is creating a list. I'm a big list person. So writing down those things, writing things down makes them real. So this is also going to look different for everyone. So think about how you might have coped in the past when there has been something really stressful going on in your life. Maybe you need to call on that strategy if you've used that before. But as we move forward to take care of ourselves, here are a few things I encourage you to do. And I also suggest that you be realistic because what might look right for someone else might look different for you. And if you need to reach out to a mental health professional, reach out, whether it's for yourself as an adult or for your child. Get your child some help. At this point, telehealth, via whether it's video or phone, is easily accessible. There are also support groups offered online by lots of different topics, and there are a lot of free support groups at this time. 12-step meetings are really important and a source of online support. Nurture your, your own support system, whether it's your family or your friends or your neighbors. Other things, exercise, get that endorphin release, prayer, mindfulness and meditation, journaling, positive affirmations. Pay attention to your nutrition, managing your money, especially if this is a source of stress or conflict for you. Maybe this is the time to take some time and look at your finances. And gratitude. If you or a family member has been impacted by COVID-19, it can be easy to get sucked into that negativity, but finding maybe three things that you can be grateful for daily can help with optimism and hope. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Those words are so powerful, so basic, and yet we forget them so often. And I want to thank you, Michelle, for reminding us about what's important. And I want to thank folks who are broadcasting this for keeping this information out there. This is as critical as any program, uh, any data that we share, to look after ourselves during this. And this happens to all of us, to the young people that are out there. Your mayor gets stressed. I get stressed. I have moments where I have a panic attack or where I have to write down what's stressing me out, where I have to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. None of us are immune from this. And though I'm used to a lot of stress in this job, this is unlike anything any of us have gone through before. So give that stress, give that anxiety, give those worries a voice. And the first part is seeking help. And if you do need help, here's a couple numbers I want to share with you. The county's Department of Mental Health has a 24-hour uh, access center at 800-854-7771. It's 800-854-7771. For LAUSD students and families, I've previously shared the district's phone hotline where you can talk with counselors and mental health professionals between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays. Let me share that number with you again. It's 
213-241-3840. And as I mentioned before, anyone can also just use your phone and text 741-741 to connect with a crisis counselor at the Crisis Text Line, an organization run and founded by Nancy Lublin, a dear friend of mine for many years, and it's part of my crisis response team's referral process. All of these resources and numbers, if you forgot any of them or didn't catch them, are available at that coronavirus.lacity.org webpage. Just click on resources. Let me just reaffirm in closing Michelle's message. Speak directly to every person in Los Angeles, young or old, healthy or sick, struggling or getting by. We haven't been through anything like this before. The headlines are incessant. The challenges are so significant. And I, know that, and I know that the isolation is real. But whatever you're feeling, know that you're not alone. We're all feeling this together. And when I say that we will get through this together, I mean it. This is not a permanent new normal. This is a period of time that will pass, and we will pass through it together with the strength that we gather when we give voice to our isolation, when we join hands virtually to march forward through these foggy days until it is clearer ahead. So breathe, this is not forever, do not despair. There are signs of light and we will get there because you continue to stay healthy, to stay safe and to stay at home. All strength and all love to you Los Angeles, thank you.